Hello everybody and welcome back to Victoria where we have a few problems here, but they're not as bad as they might appear on first glance. We would be positive if we weren't constructing, so that's great, but we need to tick on forward here a little bit. I'm hoping that we can get this railway done before our construction pauses. That's the goal here, and I think... I think we can do that. Right? Yeah, we can do that. Fantastic. That should be fine. So we'll get that completed, and we have this market access issue, but it is getting fixed. Iron is expensive right now. That won't be the case for very much longer. And we need to get rid of these trade routes. There we go. So we're going to be finishing up our construction here soon, and we're going to stop after we get this railway done, I think. Is there anything else here that's truly necessary? No, that's a negative. I'd like to get some of these things done, but it is what it is. So this is currently being negative, but our demand for a lot of goods are going to drop a lot. So I think it'll be fine. I hope. We'll get this railway completed in three weeks. But things definitely just took a downswing for us. Two more weeks here. One more week. Okay, cool. So, fingers crossed that things will improve dramatically here in a bit. But let's... Actually, they should. They definitely should. Because we're using a lot of iron tools and... Are we using coal for our construction goods? No, iron wood tools fabric. Fair enough. So that will drive a lot of our costs down and our profits up. That's the goal here anyway. I was definitely not expecting this to functionally double. So there's that. But we'll take, an, take a peek at that in a moment. Yeah, just railways here. Noted. Okay, so we finished that up. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and finish this coal mine since it's only one week away and then we'll pause. Okay, so there we go. Let's go ahead and pause our construction queue. Fantastic. That will drive a lot of our prices down. And hopefully driving our subsidies down as well. Because what we're currently paying for most, I believe, is engines. So let's double check that here. Uh, railway. Primarily engines, yes. Engines and coal. Engines will get cheaper, though, as we uh, see the price of steel and tools and partially coal drop. Okay. Of course, our GDP takes a big hit because we're not constructing right now. That's to be expected. But man, minus 10k. That's rough. That's really rough. It's primarily subsidies here. And if we could just... Okay, prices are definitely coming down here. There's no doubt about that. That's good. That is, in fact, very good. So we're hoping that our subsidy costs come down as well. I really wish that there was, like, a slider here on this bar where you could tell it, don't employ more than this amount if we're subsidizing. Because as it is right now, if we go out here... We have too much infrastructure. We could cut costs here if we could control how many people are actually employed by our railway. It's just all or nothing, unfortunately, with subsidies as they are right now. It's very sad. Very sad indeed. So what do we want to do about this issue? Well, our subsidies are primarily the issue. Unfortunately, if we cut our subsidies due to the aforementioned issues, our railways are suddenly going to be deserted. Because our transportation costs are really, really low. Because this game has really weird balancing between market access and transportation costs. It's very strange. Very strange indeed. So, what do we want to do about this? We're on government run right now. 
Moving it over to privately owned would cut the wages, but to be honest, the wages aren't the problem here. Like, look at this cost here. We're paying almost nothing in wages. I mean, the subsidies, there's a lot there. So it's actually like 2400 Almost 2500 in wages. Noted. So, I mean, the core problem here comes down to transportation being too cheap. That's what it boils down to. So what can we do about that? I don't believe we can export transportation. We're consuming it as much as we can, but I am noticing we're the number 10 producer worldwide of transportation. So my question is, what is the AI doing that we're not? Am I missing something? Let's actually take a quick look around. Let's switch over, and I'm not going to change anything. Let's switch over to Brazil here. And let's see what the AI has going on. So, if we look at, say, Rio de Janeiro. Using 46 of 57. Being produced from industrial port, coastal state, base value, and pops. 45.3 from pops. And they have no railway here right now. How are they generating so much infrastructure from their pops, then? Uh-huh. That doesn't say. So how are they generating 45.3 from pops? Because if we were to look over in Buenos Aires, we're generating 14.7 from pops. They have a lot higher population in this state. Per capita, is that about the same? So, let's see here. O opening up, up a calculator. So, 45.3 divided by 1.29 million. That's 35.11. Okay. And then coming down over here again. And pulling open the calculator again here. Let's see. We've got 14.7. So, 14.7 divided by 0.49 three it's similar 29.8 compared to 35 so another question then is well do they just have not very much development here university paper mills uh they have a decent amount of development okay that's interesting those numbers feel very different to me let's take a look up in france Looking at Paris, using 58 out of 109. So we're just overdeveloped, essentially, for our population. That's what it comes down to. I think. But regardless, I mean, we'll, we'll swap back over here. I don't think we actually needed to swap, but that's fine. So, interesting. Very interesting indeed. Could we get away with boosting our taxes? I mean, not really. We might be able to get away with some consumption taxes. We have a consumption tax on transportation. I don't think that really helps at this moment. We could put in a consumption tax on tobacco, though. That would help. And then a, con a consumption tax on luxury furniture. Absolutely. And then another one on wine. So all of that helps. There's no doubt about that. Then, we have some decrees going on here. And three of them are road maintenance. We no longer need those. That opens us up a lot more authority. So let's then put in, say, luxury clothes. We barely make anything off of that. We could go for services. But I don't think that's a great concept there. But what choice do we have? Well, we could bump up to high taxes. We're 43 right now. We could actually bump up to very high taxes. And start making money. Our legitimacy suffers at 33. But it is what it is. We're going to get a bunch of radicalism, I think. But at least we're making money now, and we can start paying off our interest. Excellent. 
so that's all underway. In the meantime, of course, we are building up our investment pool, and we're going to use that investment pool for our construction. Low market access in Mendoza right now. Okay, let's take a look here. This railway is subsidized, and it is full. It is absolutely full. But we need another level of it, unfortunately. Because our pop here is just not very big. So we definitely need to boost up our infrastructure here. Now, of course, we're not building right now. So that'll be fine. We're hoping that standard of living is an awfully flat line. Okay, that's a little strange, but sure. So it's the population. Oh, you know what it is? It's probably because we switched over and then switched back. And so it just doesn't have data. Because all of these are on 4 October, 8 October, 1876. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it just doesn't have data because we switched our country. That's fine. No real concerns there. And we're definitely starting to pay off this debt a little bit. So that's good. When are we going to start up our constructions again? Well, we'll let our investment pool build up for a while. We definitely need a lot more population. 12.84k annually is not awful. Hypothetically. Could we attack Paraguay at this time? They now have a defensive pact with Chile. We definitely can't fight both of them. Indeed not. So that's pretty much right out. And I'm wondering, hypothetically, if we were to bump up our barracks here, this is purely hypothetical. I don't intend to let this actually pass here. But if we were to do that and then also bump up our military wages. Now we go into here. Or rather, our country view. There we go. 181. 78 and 90. So actually, according to that, we should be capable of fighting both Chile and Paraguay. And for the moment, our finances would cover it. For the moment. But I don't think this is actually a good idea. <laughs> for the record. Because it's going to get a lot more expensive fast as we start running out of various resources, right? Because we're definitely going to do that. We are definitely going to run out of those resources. So we want to pay down this debt a bit. And what can we do here? So Chile is in a defensive pact with Paraguay. They're allied with Peru-Bolivia. But if we fight Paraguay, I don't think Peru-Bolivia has an in there. Now, obviously, Peru-Bolivia is a lot stronger than we are. So that's not really an option to fight Peru-Bolivia. Yeah, I'm not surprised that radicals are ticking up right now. Those taxes are painful. So I wouldn't mind cutting the taxes eventually. Actually, we could get away with cutting the taxes back down right now. Colonial affairs investment has increased. Cool. And can we get that up any higher? No. As far as our social security goes, that pretty much is what it is. And our standard of living has declined a little bit, probably due to the taxations. So let's work on bringing that down a little bit. And we're working on bringing our population up. Which it has come up a decent amount. That's good. We're continuing to colonize over here. Dutch people are migrating into Sao Paulo. I wish they were migrating to our territory. That would be nice. But alas, that does not appear to be the case right now. What is the... Okay, people are migrating out of Buenos Aires right now. Noted. But our overall population is on a pretty decided upswing. That's good. That's very, very good. But we do need to pay down our debt a bit. With 79000 in our investment pool, the question becomes, can we get away with building this railway? It takes like 23 weeks.
right? Yeah, 23 weeks. So if we were to do that, this is going to change by 18.5k per week. So yeah, we definitely can't do that yet. We'll have to wait, which is sad. Our GDP is doing okay. I mean, we're number 30 worldwide and number 11 worldwide per capita. We just need more people. That's what we need right now. People to work. But cool, we're definitely paying down our debt here, and that's great. Market access in Mendoza is a little low, but for the moment, that seems reasonably fine. I would really like to see something come in over here for a political movement, though. I mean, we've gotten this economy on the right track. It's just very slow, right? There's no doubt about that. And the question is, are we actually going to stop at the end game here? Because, to be honest... It's already 1877. I mean, we've got a decent amount of time left, but I'm not sure how much ascending we're actually going to get because this is quite a uh, low start to start from. There's no doubt about that. We'll work our way up and see how far we can get, for sure. But I'd love to see these colonizations down here finishing up and getting us even just the 17% population here. 0.96% pop growth there. That's not bad. How's our research going? Eight years left on international exchange standards. Fair enough. And the gold fields down here. How's that going? Okay, reasonable. 500 minting from that. And the gold mine here. Okay, sure. Okay, these guys are heading to Tuscany, apparently. I don't know why they're doing that, but sure. They're migrating to Tuscany. Okay. What is this? Peru-Bolivia wants a trade agreement. We accept. Cool. So, the main problem with attacking Paraguay and Chile... I, I think we can pull it off. But the main problem with doing it right now... And I want to double check that again. So, power projection of 16? Oh, that's us. Awesome. Never mind. Never mind. Hang on. These guys. <laughs> More like it. 78. Cool. And then Paraguay was at 90. Yeah. So, the main problem was I expect our costs to rise dramatically, and I didn't want to go into default while we were attacking. 80% agriculture throughput due to a crop failure. 1,300 government expenses, but we would do relief. Okay, we'll do it, but yikes, a crop failure right now is not what I wanted to see. <laughs> That's for sure. That's a major crop failure. So that means that we have a grain input goods shortage, which is not surprising. And we should try to import some here. Uh, we need, looks like almost exactly 300. So if we were to import these two, like that. That should help alleviate that. At least for now. Fantastic. But yeah, five-year crop crop failure. That's uh that's a big one. We're gonna finish up our colonizations down here eventually. We're definitely colonizing this a lot faster than Chile is, so that's good. There are some discoverable resources down there. And I would very much like to get our international exchange standards done soon. Unfortunately, that's eight years out. So what can we do here at this point? Well, we're watching our radicals slowly tick up. And as far as that goes, we can't really change our government too much. Ideally, we'd like to cut taxes at some point, but now is definitely not the time for that. I mean, I would like to cut taxes more than it is here. Like, we're on we're on even taxes right now, right? But unfortunately, with so many empty jobs, there's not really a lot we can do about that. The good news is, we are up to 1.51 million population, gaining a decent amount annually at this point, 13,000. That's definitely not bad. We need additional convoys to increase their level. <laughs> Nothing we can do about that right now, to be honest. 
How are we doing on our investment pool? Almost 200,000 in there. But if it's pulling out about 20 per, per week there, and we need 23 weeks. So hang on, calculator. 20,000 times 23 weeks is 460,000 that we need in there. Okay, plus 20% conscriptable battalions. Cool. Still only one right now, but that's fine. Okay, what can we potentially do laws-wise? Peasant levies isn't necessarily great. That's for sure. Anything else that we can really go to here? I mean, graduated taxation exists. That would actually be a slight increase. Who favors this? The trade unions. Industrials, land landowners, and petite bourgeoisie don't like it. We probably can't afford that at this moment. And we can't ban slavery currently either. Which is fine, I guess. I mean, it's good for our economy, but we should probably do that for our standard of living issues. Boosting our standard of living would be a very big deal. No doubt about that. So Brazil's average standard of living is 13.1. Ours is 14.2. Chile's average standard of living is 12.3. Ours is 14.2. Peru, Bolivia, 12. We have the highest standard of living around here by a wide margin. So that's good. Checking in here on Uruguay. We, of course, can't do anything with them, necessarily. Paraguay, I would love to attack. That defensive pact with Chile does give me pause. Would Peru Bolivia join? They may join either side or remain neutral. I would think Peru Bolivia would join. So basically, we can't do this. We can't attack anyone over here right now. That's for sure. We just had a political movement disband. Hopefully another decent one starts up soon. And also our GDP has reasonably recovered from our pause. So that's great. Another political movement disband. There are no political movements right now. Okay. That's definitely noted. And we're paying down our interest here. That will eventually be done. And we're just trying to put people to work right now. That is our primary goal. We just want people to go to work. And we need a lot of it. That's for sure. We need a lot of people in particularly these coal mines. Looking at that, yeah, we can, we can definitely fit a lot more people in there. We've got a lot of space in that coal mine. That's for sure. So that would be great. We're currently at number 51 in the world. We could increase our prestige, but honestly, we're not looking to do that at this point. All we're looking to do is seize an opportunity. And we need to find that opportunity. Hmm. We're looking at our neighbors kind of greedily at this point. Brazil would allow us to become a protectorate. But I doubt we want to do that. I really don't think that's what we want. So that's all well and good. We're going to be finishing up our colonization here. There we go. And another segment under our control. We're at 1.52 million populace now. And we just need so much more. So, so much more. I wish we knew what percentage of these, like, I, I wish that this game simulated, like, population age, right? So we would be able to know if the dependents here are primarily children or, like, family members of some other type. So we'd know how they're going to be aging into our population here. Because we have to figure, this pop growth takes a while to enter the workforce, right? I mean, we allow child labor, but even so, that's several years. So I don't know how old our population is. 
And that's definitely an interesting question. Our radicals are ticking up. That's unsurprising given our government acceptability rating. The landowners just have very little clout right now. That's the primary issue there. And there isn't anything that would be better. So it is what it is. What do we got going on here? Additional turmoil, sure. And we're spending down our debt reasonably quickly, ish. We're up to 300k in our investment pool at this point. That's quite a lot, to be honest. But it's not enough to build that railroad. Not yet. So it is about time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And hopefully next episode, we can make a move. I'm hoping that that will be the case. This episode, we kind of just sat there, which is unfortunate. But it is what it is. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including Casserol, ALS Gamer, Kentuin, James, Shadow Wolf, Mlohan80, Kentogen, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Unisil, Kadra, Rogue Corvid, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.